Good morning, friends. Look how beautiful it is outside. I cannot believe we are in a winter wonderland. It is April 10th today and we have snow. I think this is probably a record for us for having snow this late in the year. Our last frost date was supposed to be March 30th. So this is pretty crazy. Let me show you what the garden looks like. Oh my gosh. So what we gotta do is we gotta go take care of the chickens. Hey girls, good morning. Wow, branches are breaking. This is how we have the waterer set up. There's a seven gallon container with a tube and that tube does freeze. And so I came out here and I just put some water in a nine by 13. I know it's not the prettiest thing. And then I gave them some fresh food and I gave them some scraps, but look how much of their shelter is not under snow. The whole rest of our property is covered in snow and they have this really nice area that's just completely clear. Honestly, I did not think of that when we put the shelter here or the run. The biggest thing for me was I can't grow much here because these trees produce too much shade, but this is a huge benefit. It'll also, in the summer, I'm thinking we'll keep them much cooler because these trees are just gonna produce a ton of shade for them. And chickens honestly do better in cold than they do in heat. They just don't like to walk around in snow. So I collected their eggs already this morning and I think, oh wow. Can you hear that? There's branches breaking. I collected their eggs. They're not too dirty actually, cause it hasn't been raining, but they do need to be washed. But I thought today would be a good day to get some stuff done around the house. I had all these big major plans I was gonna do today out in the garden, to be honest. We bought a bunch of stuff, I never got it planted. And that's clearly not gonna happen this morning and that's okay. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend the time inside. I do have a little bit of computer work I have to get done early this morning. But I think the rest of the day, we will tackle some canning. making me nervous because I keep hearing branches cracking. Um, the snow is very wet, but uh, usually we get a bunch of branches breaking when it's icy because the ice is a lot heavier. So we're going to go inside after I clean up. I need to take a shower. We will go ahead and we will get some cleaning projects done, some canning projects done, and cook some nice yummy These branches are hanging low because they're so heavy. Nice, yummy, cozy dinner tonight. I don't know what I'm thinking we're gonna cook for dinner, but I'm thinking something cozy because today warrants that. We haven't started the fire in probably a month. That's kind of the mindset I was getting in. I was gonna be putting the entire wood stove to bed basically for the spring and summer this week. But I think before I do that, I'm gonna bring some wood in and we're gonna get a fire going. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll cook some dinner on the fire today. I don't know. To get the fire started, I load the wood stove with just the logs. I don't put any sort of special kindling or anything like that. I like to do a crisscross shape and then I have one of our fire starters we made together and I just torch that fire starter. I close it up and that's all I have to do to get this fire going. It's only been about six 10 minutes or so, and you can see how that one fire starter really gets these fires going. I wanna get this thing hot, and we're just gonna let this go all day. I'm gonna have this nice and toasty for us all day. Let me show you kind of what my goals are for the day. These are black beans we grew last year, and I never got around to cleaning them or canning them, so I want to deal with this today. I want to can all of these black beans up. With just how busy life has been, this pantry has kind of gotten out of control. So I want to clean it up and tidy it a little bit. And then we've got a laundry room that has been neglected for way too long. Let's show you. Now this is real life. I did not tidy anything before I brought you in here. We have a suitcase from being out of town. We were out of town and then we came home and we worked on that chicken project and everything was put aside to get that chicken project done. And so there is a suitcase there. There is 
these are clean laundry there's clean laundry everywhere and it just needs to be folded put away we need to just clean and cook and enjoy the day to day so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to have a little bit of coffee and then i am going to go shower and get ready do just a little bit of computer work then we're going to come down and we are going to get this house put together i've got these eggs here they're pretty clean but i'm going to go ahead and wash them because next week or not next week this weekend i'm going to my mom's house and we're going to prep for a big thing easter and I'm going to bring these eggs over there. So I want to make sure they're nice and clean. And then I sell eggs to a couple friends. So I need to have those clean so that I can sell them to a friend. So I kept saying I was going to go shower. But I got distracted by unloading the dishwasher. I have a hard time starting my day unless my dishwasher is unloaded. And I also wanted to do this so that I could get some canning jars washed in the dishwasher while I was showering. I didn't want to waste that time. We are not only going to be canning up those black beans today but we're also going to be canning up some plum jam i had a bunch of plums that grew on my tree last year and they've just been sitting in my freezer waiting for me and i thought right now is the perfect time because it's snowing outside and so it's a good fun project to do inside these are the canning jars we're going to wash my favorite way to prep jars to can in is just to run them through the dishwasher so that i know they're nice and clean then I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and get these egg washed so we can check another thing off our list. Sometimes I like to do those really quick projects just so that I feel accomplished and motivated to keep going. And then I thought, I better get this chicken on the wood stove and cooking because this is a frozen chicken. I just ran some water over it long enough to thaw it enough to get the plastic off. And then we're going to cook this on the wood stove from frozen and I'm putting in a bunch of veggie scraps. I like to save my veggie scraps. We have onion peels and celery ends and carrot peels. And that way it can make a really yummy broth and you're not wasting those scraps. I put in some garlic salt and pepper and I fill with water. And then I put this on the wood stove to simmer all day. Once the chicken is cooked, we'll peel the meat off the bones and then we will put the bones back in to keep simmering. Whew, I'm showered. I feel so much better. We're ready to conquer the day. It's amazing what getting ready can do. I figured I'd put comfy clothes on because we're just going to be puttering around. We're going to be productive but we're going to be puttering. That's one of my favorite things to do is kind of just work around the house. First thing we need to do is clean these black beans and get all the chaff or chafe or whatever away from the beans but I'm going to plant these beans this year so I'm going to save quite a few of them let's save that many so this is going to be for planting and this is going to be for canning Josh came up with this way of cleaning the black beans last year and I figured let's just do the same thing because it worked so well I have two bowls and a fan on high and I take the bowls and I just pour the beans from one bowl to the other. And because the beans are the heaviest thing, they fall and the stuff that I'm trying to get off, the greenery, it's pretty light. The fan just blows it away. So that is what I'm doing. It probably took about 10 to 12 different times going between bowl to bowl to get this clean. It didn't take very long at all. Once we got the majority of it out, then the bigger stuff was easy to kind of pick out with my hand and then I did go through and I just took handfuls by handfuls and I just kind of hand picked out the last little bits that needed to be cleaned up. Look how beautiful we got these. We're still going to rinse them off but we have an entire colander of homegrown black beans we're going to can. I did decide to go ahead and I'm going to save these as well so we're going to save all these and these for planting. I just would rather have more black bean seeds to plant than to can. It is mind blowing and humbling to me that I grew these black bean seeds and these were seeds that I saved from the previous year. So in 2020, I bought some black bean seeds. I planted them. I grew them out. I had dried some and then I planted them and I got all of these from saved seed. That is such an accomplishment and oh, I'm so grateful that I was able to experience this and now we're going to be canning it and we're going to be putting it on our pantry shelf so it's just it's come full circle so let's give these a good rinse i was getting a little bit emotional there but it's just this is my dream i know that some people dream of fancy cars and 
dream vacations, but to be able to grow my own food, I don't know, it's just, I, I love it. So what I'm doing is I'm putting one cup of dried black beans into one quart jar. This is technically rebel canning because you're supposed to pre-cook beans before you can them, but I never do. I just put them straight into a jar and we can them that way. And we're gonna be using my electric pressure canner today and my regular Presto canner that goes on the stove because I'm gonna be in the kitchen and I have enough beans to do that. So I just have some really warm water here and I'm gonna fill up each jar to an inch of head space. We're not gonna add any salt or anything. This is just gonna be beans in the pressure canner. The reason I wanna save seeds to plant is because that feels like security to me. I now have confidence that I've done it two years in a row. I can grow black beans. So I wanna make sure that I keep some of those seeds saved for this year and save enough for next year too. And try to always keep enough seeds saved for two years in case say this year I don't grow any and we have a flop of a year. I wanna make sure I have enough seeds saved up. So once I have the water in there, I'm gonna take just a spoon and I'm gonna twirl the beans around just to make sure there's no air bubbles. I don't think there really is gonna be, but just in case we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm using my new favorite jar lids. These are four jars. I'm gonna link them, I have a discount code for you. They are higher quality and they are more affordable. I just went to my local grocery store and I was looking at canning lids. I was recommended these by a friend and I am absolutely loving them. And I went to go look for ball and cur jars at the store and they're over 450 a box for 12 lids, which is crazy expensive. So if you're interested in these lids, go check them out in the description box. Another thing I like about them is you can buy them in bulk and you can get a whole huge box of them instead of buying the individual little boxes. What I really wanna do right now is prep the vegetables that go in the soup, but I know I'm gonna be cooking dinner tonight regardless of whatever else I get done. So I'm gonna force myself to start doing some laundry because that's not necessarily a given whether I'm gonna get that done or not. After I showered, I did write a list of the things I wanted to try to get accomplished today. And so I was just crossing one thing off the list, the black beans are in the canner. And now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my island because I'm gonna fold my laundry on here and I just wanna make sure it's nice and clean before I put my clean laundry on it. When I have days like this where I'm trying to accomplish a lot of different things, organizing, canning, cooking dinner, cleaning, all the things then I try to think of things that I can do first so they can be working for me so like I said earlier I wanted to get the dishwasher going and I got a load of laundry going before I went and got in the shower and then when I came back down I went ahead and I got the cans going the beans in the canners because I know that's going to take at least 90 minutes if not about two hours because the 90 minutes is the processing time not the heat up and cool down time and I can have that going and working for me while I work on something else like this laundry here. One of my main goals in this laundry room was to get this counter clean. It's been way too long since I've seen this counter. We have another load of laundry going. We have some clothes in the dryer. We've hung everything up and now we're gonna bring everything upstairs. We have completely cleared this cupboard except for that, that just needs to be put away. Huge, huge progress. So I need to put the clean sheets on the guest bed, but instead of folding them and then bringing up there, I'm just gonna bring them up there and save myself a step. I can hear that my canner is ready for the weight to be put on it. Yes, that was a huge dog bone on the bed. My dogs like to hang in here with me this is my office, so they hang in here with me while I do office work. So 
So I did not realize the shams need to be washed. So I have the bed basically made. I think it looks a lot better. We're gonna go down and start another load of laundry and our canning stuff is ready for the next step. Now this is gonna start to build pressure and we're gonna have to watch it and make sure it stays at 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. So we're crossing things off the list. Uh, the laundry is not fully done because it isn't all put away and there's still clothes that are being washed and dried right now, but we got the my office cleaned and the bed made and all that stuff. We still have quite a bit of cleaning projects we need to do, but I want to stay in the kitchen area now or pantry because I'm going to have to babysit my pressure canner, the one on the stove. This is, I can link both of my pressure canners. The one on the stove, I have to make sure it stays at the right pressure for the whole time. I also have an electric pressure canner. If you want to get into pressure canning but you've been kind of nervous you might want to consider this electric pressure canner because I don't have to babysit it at all it does all the steps for me I do have to there's a button I have to push it tells me when to push the button so that it goes to the next step but overall it just is self-contained and it does itself but this one is not so since we're down here let's go ahead and start tackling this pantry now this pantry is not terrible but it has gotten a little out of control. We have some baskets with seeds that need to be put away. I wanna find a better home for my baskets in general. Right there is not perfect. I don't like where my seeds are sitting. I love these organizers, but I'm not happy with their home. Since we're doing food projects, I think I might go ahead and process the last of the pumpkins that we grew last year. And we've got another basket here we need to take care of. And it's just, kind of needs a nice good tidy up we need to vacuum i think what we're going to start with are these pumpkins because let's go ahead and get these processing and i think we're going to put our seeds maybe right here these are the pumpkins that we grew together so this pumpkin looks like it crossed with a spaghetti squash do you see how stringy it is I was going to roast this, but we still have enough pumpkin early from before that I think I'm gonna give this to the chickens. Let's open this one up and see what this one looks like. I think the girls will enjoy a nice pumpkin treat on this snowy day. My girls do not like snow. Oh yeah, this looks the same. Very interesting. This is more of a jack-o'-lantern style pumpkin. So it's not a super meaty style pumpkin, but you see that? I think, I think the chickens are gonna enjoy a nice treat. So this is all gonna go to the chickens. We have one more squash. I think this one's gonna be more of a baking squash. This squash was blue and it's turning orange as the it sits in the pantry. Oh yeah. We're gonna roast this one. Do you see how meaty this one is? I have the oven set to 400 and we're gonna roast these half pumpkins for probably 45 minutes to an hour. I was kind of embarrassed to show you the state of the pantry because I feel like we just organized it. I mean, I think it was like three or four months ago now at this point. But that's just real life. Things ebb and flow and they have to constantly be organized and readjusted to see what works, what part of the season we're in. Because things are coming out of the pantry, things then can be reorganized back into the pantry. And so it's all a work in progress. We've got three baskets with seeds in them that I had brought out to the garden. And I want to make sure I get them organized. It's kind of crazy that it's supposed to be sunny outside and it's snowing and then I have these are all the seeds that I saved I found all those seeds in the black beans I couldn't figure out where were all the seeds that I saved while they were in with the black beans so I want to get the seeds that I've saved into these containers as well so that everything is going to stay organized you know maybe it's a good thing that today was like today so that I could do stuff like this and just catch up on these types of things so they don't get completely out of control this pantry is looking a lot better already it's not perfect it'll never be perfect I'm not perfect but it will certainly look better okay I have all my seed containers open so that I can just put stuff in where they go I really enjoy projects like this where it doesn't take a lot of brain power just 
a little bit of time and energy all I have to do is put some headphones in and I can sit here and listen to something and I can see progress being made and I love it I had a bunch of garbage here I was just throwing all the garbage in this corner so I take some time to pick that up and then I found the perfect spot for my seeds I'm gonna put them on this shelf when the produce starts coming in from the garden again we might have to find a different spot because this was filled with all that winter squash but for now I'm excited that now the seeds have a better home and then I get all the stuff picked up off the floor and I go ahead and vacuum I got a bunch of flour spilt on the floor because I was transferring some flour into those containers on the left hand side there those are my new big containers I was talking about in a previous video and I think I am in love with them <laughs> Are we making some serious progress? Our timer just went off for our black beans for our canner that is on the stove. And let's show you, I wanna show you what the pantry is looking like. Cause man, is it looking a lot better. It was really starting to stress me out what it was looking like in here. And I just wanna show you how much better it's looking. So above the refrigerator, I'm putting my baskets and my stainless steel bowls. Those are all my mixing bowls and I'm gonna put my really big ones once they're washed and cleaned. Down here, I had these new buckets really close to that, but then I couldn't access anything in this area. So I pushed those over, and I'm eventually gonna to wanna to get probably four more to go this way. Here is where I have my broom and mop at this point. This needs to find a new home, but for now it works. I have all my buckets now lined up well. We have all of our seeds here, which is gonna be very functional for me as things come out. We can reorganize. We've got our squash, our onions. Some of these onions we need to process pretty soon. We'll probably chop this one up to put in the soup for dinner tonight. Up here are some more seeds that I saved last year. Canning rings. I wanna make some jam today. I don't know if I'm gonna to get to it today. I'm probably asking too much. And I went ahead and I just organized these jars over here. We have some more empty jars right up here. And then I went ahead and I got everything off this table. This is where we have our food preservation stuff. We have our freeze dryer and our food dehydrators. And then right here on this table, I'm gonna put the two pressure canners once the pressure canners are done. We got this floor swept and mopped. I did sweep them actually before I vacuumed them because there were things like the onion peels and stuff that I didn't want to try to vacuum up. Now what I'm gonna do is my dishwasher is done and I need to unload, those were the random tools here that I collected, these are garbage, so I can throw these away, that I collected from the pantry. So the dishwasher is done. We can unload and load it. I thought I would get some plum jam going because that can be cooking on the stove while I fold the laundry and do the dishwasher. I have, I pre-measured out my plums in this Ziploc bag for one batch of jam, so I don't have to re-measure anything, which is really nice. And I have two backs, so we're gonna do two batches today. I've never even made plum jam before, but I've eaten it and I really enjoy it. Oh, they smell good. So it said to put a little bit of water in there. They're not expecting you to use frozen plums though. So I'm not gonna put any water in because I think that the freezing process will put enough moisture in there. So I'm gonna turn this on low and I'm gonna put a lid on it. My lid is on, my lid for this pot is over on the wood stove, so maybe I'm not gonna put a lid on it. So we're gonna let this cook. We need to measure up some sugar. When you're making jams, you cannot reduce the amount of sugar. I'm doing a low sugar jam recipe. I prefer, sorry if you can hear the canner, it's decompressing temperature. If you reduce the amount of sugar, you're not gonna get a good set on your jam. It's gonna be more like a syrup. So you have to follow the directions exactly. So we need, for this two recipes, we need eight, we need nine cups of sugar. So that was six. I don't know how many that was. We're gonna have to re redo that. Now we're gonna take from our pre-measured amount, a half a cup out, and we're gonna mix in two packets of pectin. We're gonna stir that together. This is halfway thawed, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just add the sugar pectin mixture. I'm unloading the dishwasher. 
going to stir that in a little bit. We have pumpkin in the oven. Oh, this is, this is done. I should have probably put something down. I'm going to let that cool a little bit, and then I think we're going to make some pumpkin bread to go along with dinner tonight. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and scoop out the flesh of this pumpkin. This is probably going to be the perfect amount to make some pumpkin bread. I used all my sugar with the jam in my container, so now we're going to fill. Oh, that's flour. <laughs> I can link the original recipe of this pumpkin bread down below, but I did deviate just a little bit. The original recipe calls for two cups of sugar, and I went ahead and cut that in half, and I just did one cup, and it turned out just fine. And then it calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, a half teaspoon of salt. I probably added a little bit more than that. One teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And then I just stirred those all together and mixed to combine. I kind of didn't follow the steps either, and I did not measure or weigh out how much pumpkin I had. I just used all the pumpkin I had from that one pumpkin. And then I took a second to go ahead and put all my dry ingredients away before I went ahead and I added all the wet ingredients. Now this is the pumpkin pie spice. I did not measure that out either. Obviously, I just <laughs> sprinkled what I thought was an appropriate amount. And then we added two eggs and one and a half cups of avocado oil. The recipe calls for butter, but I did not feel like melting butter. So that is why I went ahead and used avocado oil today. And then I mixed this all up to combine. This turned out really perfect. Uh, there was no need to add the full two cups of sugar. It was plenty sweet. So we mix it up with a Danish dough whisk. That's what this is here and then we are going to put them into our baking dishes. Our plum jam here is almost ready. It has to be completely boiling before we can go to the next step. But, but our pumpkin bread is ready to go in the oven. And our pressure canner is ready to be emptied. And I'm going to fill this up with water and we're going to can our jam in this pressure canner. But we're gonna water bath can it, we're not pressure canning it. I just realized I forgot to add my vanilla to my pumpkin bread, but that's okay. When you're opening your pressure canner, you need it to be completely depressurized and cool before you take the lid off. Ooh, hot! And you probably want to open that canning lid away from you and let it steam drip down into the canner. And I was just checking my jars to see if we had any breakage or anything. Doesn't look like any of them had any issues. I forgot to put vinegar in my canner. If you put vinegar in the canner, it can help prevent white, the white mineral deposits on the canning jars. It doesn't affect the efficacy or the seal of the jar or anything. It just makes for a prettier jar and you can wipe that off. So what I'm going to do is because I can see my color of my water is a little bit dark and I think there was a little bit of siphoning and that's just where the water from the jar comes out into the canner and I don't want that when I'm canning my plum jam so I'm going to dump this water out and fill it with fresh water. Our jam is almost ready over there. It is boiling away but not quite so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a second here and I'm going to strain out our broth and I want to get our dinner going the actual vegetables that are going to be in this I think some water got on my stove because it's percolating over there this broth is really dark I don't know if it's from the cast iron I've never had that issue before but it tastes really good I've already tasted it you want this to be at what's called a rolling boil. So even when you stir it, you're not stirring the bubbles away. So it looks like we're there. So now what we do is we add our sugar and this is gonna drop the temperature. 
So we need this to come back up to a rolling boil and that'll probably take a couple minutes. And then once it comes back up to a rolling boil, we're gonna have it boil for one minute. That's such a beautiful red color. So I wanna to talk to you about this broth. It's dark. I've never made broth that's that dark before. And I tasted it again and it tastes metallic. I tasted the chicken a couple times. I kind of snacked on it for a snack and the chicken tastes fine. So I think there's something wrong with my Dutch oven. I think that it probably lost its seasoning or something and it needs to be reseasoned because this stuff does not taste good. <laughs> and unfortunately there's a very distinct metallic aftertaste. So this broth is going down the drain, which is extremely sad and extremely disappointing. So I'm gonna have to do some research on my Dutch oven to see if maybe it lost its seal or something. So I'm gonna have to come up with plan B for dinner tonight. But let's get this jam thawed. This is done. We can open this now, I think. Yep. They look fantastic in there. So we're gonna just, I'm gonna let those cool for just a minute before we empty them. I'm gonna try to focus on this jam. And while I'm focusing on this jam, in the back of my mind, I'm gonna be thinking about what we're gonna do for dinner instead. I think this is one of the prettiest jams I've ever made. It's absolutely stunning. I did take an immersion blender to it and blend it up just a little bit so it'd be even smoother. We only have to put a quarter of an inch headspace on this one. So I definitely wiped the rims on these because I made a little bit of a mess. I'm using the same brand of lids and I'm super excited to use them. We're gonna put a new lid on each jar. So my jam is warm. So my water is very warm. You don't ever wanna put hot jars in cold water because it'll break your jars. Once this comes to a rolling boil, then we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and we're gonna water bath this can this for 10 minutes. I almost forgot about the pumpkin bread, but I smelled it because I did not set a timer. Can't find a toothpick. I think I'm gonna give it three or four more minutes. I reevaluated, I almost hit a wall there. Well, I did kind of hit a wall. It's getting kind of tired and I was really bummed about dinner because that was supposed to be my easy, dinner. So this is almost boiling. We are going to do instant pot macaroni and cheese. We have 16 ounces of large macaroni noodles in our instant pot. We have one quart of chicken broth or four cups. We're going to add just a little bit of salt, some garlic, onion powder, and pepper. We're going to give that a stir. We're gonna put our lid on and we're gonna put it on manual for four minutes. I went ahead and cut up broccoli. I was gonna cook this in the Instapot with the pasta, but I just decided not to do it and we're gonna roast the broccoli instead. A Little bit of avocado oil, pepper, lots of garlic and some salt. Stir that together. So in less than the time it took to can our jam, we have dinner in the oven, broccoli, our banana bread, our pumpkin bread is out, our pasta's going. My goal was to try to have it a completely clean kitchen today, clean refrigerator, clean laundry room, clean pantry, clean office, clean house, and get all that canning done. Well, I think I bit off a little bit more than I couldn't chew. Uh, the laundry room is clean. There is one load of laundry in the dryer. I'm not gonna fold that because it is now 6.16. We've been at this for a while. The pantry looks fantastic. I'm happy with the progress we made in there, even just a couple of times I've come in here. 
since we got it clean, I already feel better about it. It's a joy to come in here now, not a stressor. We got the office clean and organized, which I appreciate that. And there is a pile of dishes here. I have my dishwasher ready to go. I just need to turn it on. And I'm gonna show you how to finish this pasta, but I just wanted to take a second to say, you know what, you can't do everything and we're all work in progress. So I'm not gonna worry about the things that we didn't get done. I'm gonna focus on the things we did get done. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the items that we didn't do today, like the refrigerators, and I'm gonna put them on tomorrow's list. So we only have about five more minutes on these and it's coming together. I can't wait to show you how easy it is this pasta is once that's done because it comes together in a matter of minutes. Every single one of our beans so far has sealed, which is pretty exciting. What I'm gonna do with these and with the jam when it comes out is I'm gonna let them come completely to room temperature so they're gonna sit out on the counter overnight. We're gonna take the rings off, we're gonna wipe them down and we're gonna put them in the pantry. We never ever ever store our jars with the rings on because if that seal is gonna break, you wanna know it's gonna break. It's not the ring that keeps the seal, it's the pressure that was created inside that jar that keeps the seal. So if the seal's gonna break, you can get a fault seal if you keep the ring on because it could break and then reseal and then you can have bad stuff growing in your jars. So that's why you always take your rings off so that when they're sitting in your pantry shelf, if you're gonna have a seal failure, you're gonna know it because the seal's gonna pop right off. Which seems counterintuitive, but trust me, for food safety, that you wanna store them without the rings on. Once your Insta Pot's done, you wanna do the quick release. So anytime I do this, I always put a thing over it so it doesn't spew steam all over. So you can see the pasta is thoroughly cooked and there's no moisture left in the bottom of the Insta Pot. So the next thing we're gonna add is two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put that in there, let that melt. We're gonna add a cup of milk and three cups of cheese. It would be good if you had mozzarella cheese and cheddar, but I only have cheddar right now, so we're just gonna add cheddar. We stir this together. I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute and that's gonna let everything melt. So you can see how everything's melted and nice and creamy. So let's give this a taste test. I already know it's gonna need more pepper, but I always put pepper on macaroni and cheese on my plate. That's just one thing I've always done. Perfect. Perfectly cooked. The noodles are not mushy at all. Great cheesy texture. The broth adds a layer of like umami richness that you don't normally get because normally you just use milk to make macaroni and cheese. And so this is fantastic. I would try this. I'll leave the recipe for this down in the description box if you're interested in it. I think the broccoli's done. Yum. You know what, something we should be proud of today? We used three homegrown ingredients today. We had homegrown pumpkin, homegrown plums, and homegrown black beans. That is an amazing accomplishment that I am proud of. Even though I didn't check everything off the list, two wins and a fail, I guess, because we did fail on that broth. I'm not sure what I did there. That is super weird. I've never had an issue cooking in that cast iron before, so I'm gonna have to look that up. We have a wonderful dinner that I threw together in a matter of minutes. Thankfully, I have this recipe in my arsenal. So we have macaroni and cheese, the broccoli, and then, ooh, it's warm in here. I'm gonna turn that stove off, or the oven off. Josh is probably gonna wanna put chicken in his macaroni, and so he'll have some protein. I am thoroughly wiped out. I am tired. I'm gonna call Josh down to eat dinner. Thank you for hanging out with me. If you wanna watch other cooking and organizing videos, I can put those up here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you for spending time with me in my kitchen today, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Have a great day, guys. Bye.